Well, it was a long weekend. We made it through WonderCon. Let's go back to my place and let me show you guys what I got. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that little montage. I had a great time at WonderCon, met a lot of great people, had a lot of good conversation, and I was actually able to walk away with a lot of great books right here. I will say that, you know, being that it was WonderCon, you know, bigger show, uh, bigger, you know, vendors, uh, bigger stickers on a lot of the books for sure. So, uh, you know, I wasn't able to find as many like amazing deals as I was hoping for, but I did get a lot of great stuff and this one right here is actually one that I got at the end of the show and probably the biggest book I walked away with uh, one that I really needed for my Avengers run uh, and this one right here is Avengers number three third issue of the Avengers run this would actually be the first time that Submariner meets the Avengers so you know kind of a little uh, minor key aspect to this book I mean it's a great Silver Age blue chip book, or I, I guess I, I wouldn't really call it a blue chip book, but a really, you know, classic book, one that is kind of hard to find. I mean, you don't see too many Avengers 3s uh, laying around. So getting this book here was really exciting for me because um, I now have one through 20. No, I have one through 19 now. So at least I have that first uh, grouping of books that are sort of the hardest ones to get your hands on. But this one is a really beautiful copy. It actually presents really nicely in this Mylar bag. Um, the guy, uh, the Seeker City Comics, who is the ones that I got it from, uh, they had it marked at a 3.0, but it, it presents incredibly. The colors look incredible on this book. And uh, this is a really cool one. One of the ones I was concerned with getting my hands on, you know, especially once we get Submariner into the MCU, I was a little bit worried that this book might catch on for some spec reasons. I mean, it was always gonna be, you know, a book that probably continues to go up in value uh, over time, but I was concerned that this one might pop a little little harder uh, once the you know the market caught up to all the silver surf or the um, Namor stuff in relation to the Avengers so uh, this one uh, the guy had it priced at $350 uh, it was at the end of the show I took a look at it wasn't sure if I really wanted to commit uh, but by the time like I went through the whole weekend I went back to his booth as he was packing up and we were able to negotiate it down he gave it to me for 310 which was you know a yes yeah, it's, it's a it's a pricey book but you know that's kind of what I've seen it go for at least like at this quality in this grade. So, you know, Avengers number three, uh, super happy to have this one. And I'm not too far off from uh, at least checking off all of the key books uh, in my Avengers run that I'm going for. And actually, um, on top of the ones that I'm buying here today, or the, the books that I bought here, uh, I actually did make some trades at the show, and I'm gonna have that in a different video, uh, probably coming out tomorrow, uh, where I'm gonna go over some trades, and you know, maybe there's gonna be some Avengers books in those trades. All right, this next book I got right here is one that I actually got earlier in the year, although I've already moved on with my copy, but this one is Fantastic Four, annual number six, first appearance of Annihilus, also the first appearance of Franklin Richards. Now, this is a copy that's probably like a 2.5 or so, uh, don't tell Mrs. Swag, but that's basically what the, uh, 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 the dealer had it graded at. I got this one for a hundred bucks. So a hundred bucks, not too bad. Uh, you know, it definitely has some some color break increases and things like that. But overall, like for me, I, I feel like this is a book that you know continues to be kind of hot in the market and is pro and one that you know people are constantly seeking. So I thought you know at this grade level for a hundred bucks, probably worth a pickup. This next book is actually one that's really funny. I think about a haul I did at the beginning of the year where I picked up this annual uh, six right here. I also picked up this book, so I got this one two combination uh, in two hauls now. Uh, but this next one here I got is Defenders number four first appearance of Valkyrie. And this book, I feel like is actually really, you know, kind of flying under the radar in the market. I mean, knowing what we know about sort of Tessa Thompson being the Valkyrie character and her character essentially representing this version of Valkyrie in the comic books, at least that's what they had confirmed, uh, you know, in some interviews with her. And I feel like, you know, she's actually starting to do the press tour for Thor Love and Thunder. She's going to be a part of that movie. She's probably going to have other, you know, uh, appearances in other shows in the future. So I really do think that, you know, Tessa Thompson being being the huge star that she is, is gonna have a major role in the MCU moving forward. And I feel like everyone is kind of sleeping on this book a little bit. I mean, it's a great, you know, Bronze Age book, early Defenders, uh, a very cool character. And I was able to pick this one up for 30 bucks. I thought that was a pretty good price. Guy had it graded at like a 6.5 or a seven. So, you know, not too bad if you ask me. And definitely a book that uh, I don't mind kind of stacking in my collection. Cause I definitely think when we get those Thor 11 Thunder trailers, uh, that could be another book that pops off in the market. All right, this next book here comes with a 
little bit of a story, but let me talk about the book first and then I will tell you how I came across it. But this one right here is Strange Tales number 113, first appearance of the Plant Man. Yes, everybody's favorite B-tier villain that they absolutely love. No, of course not. You guys have no idea who the Plant Man is. Well, maybe you do. If you read the most recent Empire crossover event, you would actually have known that uh, Plant Man actually made an appearance in that crossover event. But let me talk about this book right here. So I was uh, out there in the uh, bins, just kind of digging around. And then someone came up next to me and, you know, you know, asked me, we were like, oh, hey, are you Swagglehoss? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And, and he, we started to get to, uh, to talking. Uh, his name was John. And he just mentioned that he was, you know, a fan of the channel and he wanted to do something really nice for me. And he was like, hey, let me buy you a book. And I was like, oh man, that, that's that's super, you know, uh, nice of you to offer, but I would feel bad. And he was like, no, 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 I, I want to do it. Uh, I love watching your channel, uh, but here's the caveat. We got to find a B tier villain for you. So uh, we kind of went uh, a little bit hunting together. We were looking around and I had had remembered that I think I saw this book in the Strange Tales section and I was like, hey, I don't know if you know who Plant Man is, but this right here is an awesome character. And now that I have my hands on Plant Man, there's actually a little team of villains that come together to fight the X-Men and Plant Man is one of them. It's a team led by Count Nefaria and there's actually an X-Men book that has them all on the cover. And now that I have Plant Man, I actually have some of the other ones. I'm kind of thinking I'm gonna make it a mini goal to collect all of the B-tier villains on that team. And I think I only now need Eel and Scarecrow. This group of jobber villains is put together by Count Nefaria and they actually destroy the X-Men. So, hey, B-tier villains greater than X-Men. So everyone give some props to John. And John, thank you again for getting me this book. I now have a new goal that I'm gonna go for, which is to collect that. Uh, they didn't even have a villain team name. That's how lame they are. This, this C-tier list of villains come together and Marvel couldn't even give them the decency of giving them some name with some alliteration like the Sinister Six or whatever. All right, these next few books I got are actually mostly for spec reasons. I was digging through those like, I think these were like the three, four, five dollar bins or so, and I was able to come across a bunch of really cool stuff. So I'll kind of go through them uh, one by one. But this first one I got is Marvel Team Up number 68, a really nice copy. I mean, it's actually, you know, I'm not gonna say it's a 9.8 candidate, but it's in really, really good shape. But what is the significance of this? This is the first appearance of one of the Fear Lords known as Despair. And uh, with Despair, one of the cool things about him is that there is a recent toy line that came out in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And in that toy line, they actually had a toy for the character known as Despair. So this book got really hot in the market. On top of that, you know, we got that first Fear Lord in Shang-Chi. So it begs the question, how is Marvel thinking they're going to handle these like Fear Lords or is there a bigger plot that's going to come to fruition in some kind of way? I mean, I don't know if Despair is going to be showing up in Multiverse of Madness, but it is really interesting that he has a toy connection to the film. So I figured, hey, when I saw this book, I think it was like $4, definitely picking this one up. This next one here is another uh, little speckish B-tier villain book. But this one right here is Invaders number seven. And what is the significance of this? Well, this would be the first appearance of the character known as Baron Blood. Now, Baron Blood is a character that, you know, I only know as much about him as I do like in the appearances that he's had in Captain America. Like he's had a few times where he was on the, you know, the covers of the Captain America run during the 80s. But what's interesting to, to me about him is that there have been some rumors uh, for the She-Hulk show that there is going to be a camp that Abomination goes to of a, a bunch of villains that are being rehabilitated to come into you know uh, society. And among the villains that were named were things like Porcupine. Uh, there was another villain who I, whose name escapes me at the time. And then this one right here was also named uh, Baron Blood. So I'm thinking like, hey, if that rumor is actually true and we're gonna have a scene with some of these characters, a book like this might pop off in the market. And being that I got it for a couple bucks, uh, I thought that it would definitely be a good pickup. So Invaders number seven, first appearance of Baron Blood. You never know with those types of things. All right, this next book here is one that I've talked about on the channel before. I have a few copies myself, but I thought, hey, let me add another one. Uh, speaking of Thor Love and Thunder, I picked up Thor Annual number 11, first appearance of E-Trig. Of course, E-Trig is the character that Peter Dinklage played in Infinity War and Endgame. And, you know, for me, I had specced on this book a, a while back thinking like, hey, if we're going to be getting a Thor film and we're going to bring in 
in like, you know, Jane Foster Thor, we're going to bring in, you know, maybe Beta Ray Bill. Presumably they're going to need, you know, someone to make all their weapons or to reforge Mjolnir or whatever the case may be. And that got me thinking like, hey, maybe we're going to pay a visit to E-Trig once again. So I like, I had always liked this book for spec. And then in an interview recently with Peter Dinklage, they had actually asked him about his MCU role. And he made an allusion to the fact that he might be showing up in Thor Love and Thunder. So this book got pretty hot in the market and I found it for a few dollars. So, you know, it never hurts to add another one to the collection. And speaking of more Thor spec books, this one right here is Thor number 378. I uh, was able to find this one in the $5 bin, got this one for five. And what is the significance of this? Well, this would be the first appearance of this version of the costume for Thor. And this book is one that kind of got hot in the market simply due to the fact that there were some images or some leaks, maybe it was another toy leak, of Thor having a new costume and a new look. And suspiciously, it looked a lot like this one right here. So a lot of people, you know, uh, gravitated to this book. Uh, this one was flying off the charts. All right, this next book I got is another one that I've talked about on the channel before, but this one is The Trial of the Astonishing Ant-Man, number 12. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is actually the first time that Darren Cross takes up the mantle of Yellow Jacket. So if you guys remember in Ant-Man number one, we had the Darren Cross Yellow Jacket character shrink down into the quantum realm. Nobody knows where he went, but essentially the version that he was playing in the film is the one that is represented in this comic book right here. And now that we're gonna be getting Ant-Man number two, and presumably we're gonna be revisiting the quantum realm, we know that Corey Stoll is making a return. And it sort of begs the question, like maybe we're gonna get another interaction with Yellow Jacket. And if we do, this is gonna be a book that probably goes up in the market. Now, there are some rumors that Corey Stoll might be playing Modoc or some other character. And, you know, if that's the case, maybe this book is going to be a bust. But hey, I got it for $4, so not a big deal overall. This next one here, you guys might have seen in the montage, but this one is just one that, you know, I like to highlight Dark, Dark Hawk books for you guys. And there are a few Dark Hawk books that are always sort of sought after by collectors. And one of them is actually Dark Hawk Annual Number Three. Uh, there's no real, you know, huge significance to this annual other than the fact that it is very, very hard to find. It is very, very rare. And there are those people, uh, you know, who are Dark Hawk fans that like to collect this book. So, you know, I found this one for a couple dollars. It probably sells on eBay for like, you know, 30 to 40. So definitely a book worth picking up if you ask me. And then to round out the rest of my haul, I did get a ton of Avengers books that I needed for my run. I'll just quickly flip past them. Uh, this is Avengers number 14, another early Avengers that I needed just to fill out the run. I don't think that there's anything too significant about that issue, but I found that one for 40. Uh, it's been the cheapest I've you know personally seen it in person. Of course, my rule is that I have to buy all these books in person. Uh, so able to fill that one out. So now I have one through 19. Uh, this one right here, Avengers number 17. This is that Minotaur cover, just another early Avengers uh, that again, I needed to fill out for my run. Got that one for 20, uh, Avengers number 41. I think that there is a little significant thing about this, although I can't remember it right now. Avengers number 45, this is when Hercules joins the Avengers. So if you think that's a little kind of cool, little minor key, this is Avengers number 58, second appearance and origin of the Vision. Uh, so kind of a cool book that I was able to cross off the list. And then Avengers number 69, I already have this book, but every time I see it, uh, I always pick it up. This is the first appearance of the Grand Master, who is Jeff Goldblum's character. It is also the first cameo appearance of the Squadron Sinister, who, you know, is basically, you know, the characters like Nighthawk and Hyperion and things like that. Uh, characters that, you know, who knows with everything going on in the multiverse, maybe we're going to see them. So I really like this book as an interesting spec. I mean, I definitely think at the very least we will see uh, Jeff Goldblum return to his character at some point in the future. And then a last book I got for the Avengers because I was in that section is this one right here, Avengers number 125. This is just that classic Thanos cover. I've never owned this book. It's not a goal of mine to have collected because I'm just going through one through 100. But you know, when I came across 125 and I saw this cover being sold for 10 bucks, I figured, hey, why not pick it up? It's a cool cover and I've never had the book before. And then the last book I picked up is one that I think is uh, one of the coolest covers there might be in Copper Age comic books, a book I've never owned before. But this one is actually Spectacular Spider-Man number 101, just that beautiful classic 
John Byrne cover with all this negative space. I mean, I feel like this is one of those books that, you know, might be one of the better sort of $20 uh, books to invest in type of books. I really do think that, you know, over time, this is going to be a book that people seek, uh, you know, just to have in their collection. I mean, it looks good in a slab, things like that. And I really do think that uh, the 9.8 grades of this will get really expensive one day, especially if we do get, you know, Spider-Man doing black suit things. So I really do like this book. It has a little bit of a, uh, a crease right here. So definitely not a 9.8 candidate, but hey, found it for 20 bucks, not too bad of a price. I never owned the book and I just wanted to add it in my collection. Well, that is all I have for this video. That was me, you know, going through my uh, journey at WonderCon, showing you guys the books I picked up. Of course, the biggest book I got for myself is this Avengers number three. I uh, definitely was able to cross off a lot of Avengers books from the uh, run that I'm going for. So uh, really, really happy about that. Uh, stay tuned uh, for, you know, tomorrow. I'm probably going to have a video where I talk about some trades that I made. And I'm going to talk about, you know, the art of the trade. And, uh, you know, maybe I was able to pick up some major books uh, in the trades that I did. Anyways, that's all for this video. Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I'll see you in the next one.